This bill seeks to establish the Armed Forces Service Commission to ensure that the composition, appointment of service chiefs of the Armed Forces of the Federation reflects federal character of Nigeria in the manner prescribed in Section 2173 of the 1999 Constitution as amended. My name is Senator Francis Ali Mikena, representing the good people of Edo North. Mr. President and distinguished colleagues, uh, in as much as this bill is good on the paper, it's good to create a disunity in the operation of the armed forces. Uh, as it's presently composed, the Commission will not, cannot have cannot take the function of the Chief of Army Staff or the functions of all the Chiefs, of all the Service Chiefs. Because if you allow this be to materialize, the Armed Forces will be polarized and the professionalism will be, will be killed. Yes. So, Mr. Yes. President, yes. it is the function of the Chief of Army Staff or the Service Chiefs that know the competence of their officers that can recommend for any position. The service, the commission cannot know who is competent because by the time I establish this bill, the military will be politicized and everybody, the professionalism will not be there. So I believe it is better for the, the, oh, the mover of this bill to, to look at it second, the second time and reframe it. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the Omo Agege Delta Central Senatorial District. Mr. President, uh, I'd like to align myself in the main with the position taken by the leader of the Senate. Mr. President, on the surface, on the surface, it's difficult to quarrel with the content of the motion, of the, of, of the bill. But Mr. President, the devil is in the details. The devil is in the details. So I, standing here today, I will not be opposed to this bill being read for the second time. So we have an opportunity during the public hearing and when it comes before us here to look at the provisions. But let me just say up front, without prejudice to what will come out from uh, the public hearing, under Section 219, which is the anchor for this bill, what they are seeking to do is an act, enact a law, an act of parliament. Though provided for under 219, but it's also, it will be an inferior legislation to the constitutional provisions. Because the power to appoint the chief of defense staff, the chief of army staff, the chief of naval staff, the chief of air force, and other security agencies as may be, as may be determined by us. But at least this one is already determined by the Constitution. That power to make the appointment is already conferred on Mr. President. And that's a constitutional provision. That's Section 218. 218B, I believe. 218. 2182. That power is sacrosanct. It's already established. I am saying this, that there's no, we should not end up making a law which is an act of the National Assembly that we derogate from the clear constitutional powers already confirmed of Mr. President. But having said that, Mr. President, will I wait to see the deliberations of uh, uh, the public hearing and also wait for the clause-by-clause -clause, uh, consideration when it comes before us? 
Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Aleru. Thank you, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. I remain Mohammed Adamu Aleru representing the good people of Kevin State. Uh, Mr. President, I stand on the other side of the divide. And quite frankly, I find it very difficult to support the second reading of this bill because it offends the Constitution. The armed forces is the symbol of Nigerian unity. Therefore, we should not do anything to politicize it. And if we go ahead with the amendment, no, with the bill as proposed by my good friend and my brother, Senator Abadebe, the Senate Minority Leader, we will compromise the provisions of the Constitution. And we will politicize the appointments of service chiefs, which is not good for this country. Mr. President, already we have the Federal Character Commission, which has the responsibility of overseeing appointments in virtually all establishments of the federal government. Yes. And we have power yes. to summon the leader, the chief executive of any commission that offends the federal character in the appointment. Yes. Mr. President, we all know that if the Army, the Navy, the Air Force are recruiting, there are no money to comply with the of the federal government. In each, every state of the federation is given slots. In fact, equal number of slots. States that are even bigger in terms of population are not even considered based on their population. I will give you an example. A state like Lagos with a population of over 20 million people, they are given the same number of people with Bielsa, with a population of maybe about four or five billion people, with, simply because they want to comply with the provisions of the Constitution. So if we go ahead with the proposal, it will certainly compromise the integrity, the neutrality of the Nigerian Armed Forces. And this is going to be very dangerous. The service chiefs are appointed among the most competent officers in the, in, the, in the hierarchy, whether it is the Army, the Navy, or the Air Force. If a service chief is to be appointed, normally the National Security Council will recommend to the President the most senior and the most competent eh, among the officers. So if you go ahead with this proposal, Mr. President, it will undermine the constitutional provision. And what this bill seeks to do is to recognize the sixth geopolitical zone of this country, which is alien to the Nigerian constitution, even though we have acts of national assembly recognizing the geopolitical zoning, but the constitution does not recognize political zoning. So, uh, if you want to do this, first you have to amend the constitution to recognize or accept the political zone of this country into six zones before you come and uh, 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 pass this bill. Mr. President, I'm against this bill for the simple reason that it will over politicize the appointment of service chiefs. In, in our country. It will not be good for the unity of the country and it will not be good for the armed forces because it will affect their morale because uh, it may end up not recognizing the merit. And if you do that, it will bring the morale of the officers serving in the armed forces. I therefore ask my colleagues to study this bill carefully 
and do what is good for this country. Thank you, Mr. President. Deputy Man. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Our very distinguished colleagues. My name is Senator Abdullahi Adamu and I represent Nasrallah West. I want to lend my voice to the debate on this bill for the establishment of Armed Forces Service Commission. Mr. President, on the face of the bill being proposed, we are clearly being invited to comply, to comply with the provision, very specific provision of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999 as amended. That is what the sections that have been quoted in the bill is asking us or calling us to do. Mr. President, in as much as the call for this bill would appear to be in consonance with the provisions of the Constitution, as being highlighted in the lead debate, I ask, or want to ask a few questions. My first question is, yes, there is provision in the Constitution for what is being sought. But the 1999 Constitution, as amended, has been the Constitution that every National Assembly since then has sworn to preserve, protect, and defend. The mover of this bill is not a first-timer in this Senate. He has been part and parcel of at least three Senates as of this uh, uh, term of his membership. Fourth, fourth. And this Constitution has been in operation all this while. Why now? Why now? Is this suggesting that all these National Assemblies between 1999 and now that did not pass a bill for the establishment of this Commission have been in default? Is this the proposition? Mr. President, short of declaring emergency in this country, in the situation what we're going through and what our armed forces are going through, this is probably the worst period after the Biafran War. This is the worst period that has overstretched the unity, the professional competence of our armed forces. And for us now, to now want to introduce this commission at this point in time is going to be very, very diversionary. The fact remains, the fact, the fact remains, the fact remains that, yes, the President, Commander-in-Chief, the buck stops on his table. Yes, it will always stop on his table as far as we run constitutional government. And it has been stopping there all this while. Somehow, there has been some grumblings here and there since the appointment of the last set, of this current set of, you know, our, our service chiefs and the uh, chief of defense. And this is what has given birth to this bill. There's nothing wrong. It is depending on the provision of the Constitution so that, with respect, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. President, it amounts to almost blackmailing the National Assembly. 
because it's been there. This provision has been there. And the mover of this bill has been a, a legislator, has been a senator. This is fourth time, I'm reminded. And he didn't move it. Why now? Why now? So, Mr. President, while I am not ipso facto opposed in principle with the provision of the Constitution, the timing is wrong. We can take some time, we can discuss the pros and cons of this bill and see if it has to come in what form it comes. That is what we have now. Senator Adamu Mohamed Bulkachua, Salikim Bang Katagum. I want to lend my voice to this seemingly controversial, but in reality, simple and straightforward. I stand, Mr. President, to oppose this bill. And I look at the whole scenario as a non-issue. The federal character is already enshrined in the Constitution, and federal character starts from the beginning of recruitment in any service. And uh, probably those of us who don't know what federal character means and how it operates is whenever there is a vacancy, they refer to the Federal Character Commission to give them the list of each uh, occupant of a, big, uh, of a seat from all the states and they will see where there is imbalance and they will recommend to the recruiting agency uh, who to be recruited from which state. Now, to hide under the cover of Section 1, 219, 217 of the Constitution is just an academic exercise. Because, yes, it is, and I'm telling you from the point of view, I have read the Constitution, and you can't be more lawyer, lawyer than myself. Mr. President, Uh, since this constitution has been operated and even those who argue on the side of the constitution that we should follow the constitution because the constitution said the National Assembly may or shall shall <laughs> Mr. President you just read a communication from the Deputy Senate President that there will be a meeting of the Constitution Review Committee. The Constitution itself is not sacrosanct. It's not something that cannot be changed. So we can't use that argument to change the status quo. So, Mr. President, I think we should advise the mover of the motion to drop this matter and let's move ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator. For I am Senator Chukuka Otaze. I represent the good people of Enugu North, the Tradu States of Enugu State. Mr. President, the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is an institution for distinguished, eminent, respectable, individuals. The Senate of the Federal Republic, as an arm of government, people, people with the people I have just, this type of people I have just mentioned here, should rise above board in looking at issues of national importance. Mr. President, the issue before all of us here is a purely legislative matter that is presented in the Parliament for us to give effect to the 1999 Constitution as amended. 
and the, the express provisions of the constitutions are, on, are, are, are not um, ambiguous. They are very, very straightforward. Mr. President, it pains my heart that when people want to import other negativities into an issue that is straightforward, that detracts for our duty as the upper chamber of the National Assembly of, this, uh, of, the, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Mr. President, I, I don't want to go and repeat Section 217 and 21, uh, 219, but I want to say that the essence of whatever we are doing here, the Federal Character Principle, as enunciated and encapsulated in the 1999 Constitution, is to respect the diversity of this country. It will make sure that things work. We have a commission, so we have had commissions before. This commission is not going to be different from other commissions. They are going to still perform their duties as other commissions, like we have a police service commission. Mr. President, in order to make, uh, bring home this issue, I want to refer us to section 14 which my friend Olorebe alluded to in person. And, uh, 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 and I want to also give meaning to it. And that is for, uh, the section 14. I want to read from uh, uh, subsection 3. Composition of the government of the federation or any of its agencies and the conduct of its affairs shall be carried out in such manner as to reflect, the, uh, to reflect the federal character of Nigeria and the need to promote national unity and also command national loyalty, thereby ensuring that there shall be no predominance of persons from a few states or from, from a few ethnic or other sectional groups in, the, in, the, in that government or any of its agencies. And I want to also go to section, uh, subsection 4 of section 14. The composition of, of the government of a state or a local government, a local government council, or any of its agencies or such government or council, and the conduct of the affairs of the government or council or such agencies shall be carried out in such a manner as to recognize the diversity of the people within its area of authority and the need to promote a sense of belonging and loyalty among the peoples of the Federation. Mr. President, if you take this with the section 217 and 219 here, you can say that this is a harmless uh, a harmless uh, a, 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 a bill that has been proposed here for us to give a, uh, to give a concession. We have to, if you want the loyalty of Nigerians, of all sections of the country, you have to give vent to it. Part of it is having the commission. And if the commission is there, it's going to help to make ensure that there is a, that, there is a, that everybody is represented in every part of the country. Well, nobody is saying this. Today, somebody will be a president of the Federal Republic from one, age, uh, one, one Jopolika zone. Tomorrow, it can be another. What we are saying is something that is constant for all of us. Something, something that is constant for, for everybody. It's not a question of anybody now saying, because you are here, you are saying this. And again, Mr. President, it is very, very important, and Jamin here, that uh, my colleague, whom I respect so much, Senator. <laughs> Abdullah, Abdullahi Buhari uh, The Sanguish uh, 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 No, 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 before you say so Please address If you have to call the name of any senator Call him his proper name We have no Abdullahi Buhari in this In this chamber We have Abdullah Adamu In case you want me to remind you Thank you my friend, when we share such names here, Mr. President, what I want to say is, uh, why now? 
the equation of why now is that we are legislators. This is our time. Any time a member of the National Assembly thinks anything fit that is com that we uh, uh, that we engage the sensibilities and attention of the Parliament, that is the time. This is the time we have here. So we can listen on anything, Mr. President. I want to say, please, let us, gentlemen here, let us be, uh, uh, let us be who, what we are, that we are distinguished members of the National Assembly. Let us allow our bill to go for the second reading. If anybody... You, you can round up now, please. But don't kill it. President of Senate, my colleagues, distinguished senators, James A. Biowo, manager, CEO, and Delta South. Mr. President, my highly respected colleagues, I want to tell the line of thinking and reasoning of the Senate leader and the Deputy Senate President. Mr. President, this bill is just calling us on us to do what we ought to have done a long time ago. Uh, so I see it on the surface as it appears. I see it to be harmless. It's a constitutional provision, 219 of the amended constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And looking at the bill itself, Mr. President, <laughs> This bill is about one, more than one year old in this system. The bill is more than one year old. Yes, it's just coming for second reading today. So, Mr. President, it is not about what is happening today. It is about what we ought to have done a long time ago. And, Mr. President, as far as I'm concerned, it is uh, our responsibility to look at issues that are before us. And that is why we come here to sit every day, at least three times a week. Mr. President, just like I said, the, under your presidency in this Senate, there is what we now see as a style, which is good. Bills come here, if they have to die, they have to die after the second reading. That is the system that I have seen. And this particular bill is important. The details will come out. If the details come out and the bill is not good enough for Nigeria, the experts, let us not feel that we have a reservoir of knowledge. We will invite people for public hearing. Those who will come for public hearing will also advise us whether this bill is good or not good. So at the end of the day, the report will be presented. And when the report is presented, we'll go for clause by clause reading. A particular clause that is not good enough for this country will be taken out. Mr. President, there's nothing wrong with this bill. And I want to say that we are unnecessarily politicizing this bill. It's a harmless bill, and let's see it at that. Thank you, Mr. President. Distinguished colleagues. I'm following it. Any senator may challenge the opinion of the president or the chairman by claiming a division. You have a right to vote. So, Mr. President, I claim a division and I want us to vote one after the other. <coughs> Uh, that is not my opinion. It's not my opinion that the nays had it. We took a vote. The nays outnumbered or outweighed the eyes. So I, I, I think it's not right or it's not correct that the minority leader would impute the defeat of the bill to the President of the Senate. 
I think you, you, you may find another thing, but I didn't uh, rule inappropriately. Mr. President, being in this scene since 2007, and any time anybody comes up to claim a division, that division is voted upon. Mr. President, I'm not saying that you did right or wrong. I'm only saying, give me my right. And my right is that I'm saying that all our members here ought to get up and vote for this. My, minority leader. Minority leader. M minority leader. D DSP. 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 You raise your hand. I'm not going to point out what you already said. The essence of, of uh, uh, Order 73 is to challenge the opinion of Mr. President or the Chair. The power you just exercised is not an opinion and therefore not subject to Order 73. The I so move. Senator Jones, manager. Mr. President, my other very colleagues. Mr. President, Mr. President, we have had senators challenging the opinion of Senate presidents in the past. The ruling of the president of the Senate, 73, is very clear on that. Mr. President, Mr. President, this is Parliament, and this Parliament is about 20 something years old. Mr. President, you have been here since the National Assembly, this present National Assembly, in 1999, from the House of Reps to the, uh, the Senate. It is very clear, even if we vote and it's voted out, there's no problem there. It's, this is democracy in action. Precisely. It's democracy in action. Where it will go, it will vindicate you. Not your own opinion now. Your opinion is being challenged. And your, once your opinion is being challenged, you allow the practice to take place. And I sincerely believe that to wriggle yourself out of this, you allow a division to take place for people to now vote. That is my humble view. From the way you root, and from the nerves and the years, it is very clear. But don't allow this to go down as if you have refused to allow division to take place here. That is my humble view. It's a humble advice, Mr. President. Old man, not by my age, but I am fairly old here. Divisions have taken place here, and most times it has not gone against the ruling, the ruling of the presiding officers. So let this be one of those ones, Mr. President. In my humble view. Thank you, Mr. I'm, I'm not sure. The the that when it comes, have a jet speed passage, and I believe that this is something that we are used to in Parliament. So I will. Um, invite the uh, minority leader having had our appeal that um, we don't have to go into the ruling of the uh, order he raised that uh, we can do without it and the opportunity will also be available for him or indeed any distinguished senator here to represent this bill better after due consultation with, with colleagues here. 
So, Minority Leader, uh, on behalf of all of us, I'm appealing to you that please uh, uh, let's withdraw the Order 73 so that the business of the Senate uh, will continue and then if, you, if it is your wish to represent the bill, you may do so and I will advise strongly that let's consult our colleagues as many as possible to be part of the yes yeah sponsors i think that will help get an easier uh, passage thank you and i want to make a compound motion two motions uh, first mr president in order to preserve the dignity of this hallowed chambers i wish to withdraw my order 73. Secondly, and for us to be able to do further consultations on the bill that I have proposed, I wish also to step down the consideration of this bill until a more appropriate time. I so submit, Mr. President.